Hey everybody, Karen Bryan for MMA Heat. I am talking with Bobby Green, who is facing Drakkar Close at UFC Milwaukee. So listen, Bobby, you're looked, you're you're shined up, you're you're glistening. I don't know if that's your natural glow or if you just wrapped your practice. But how you feeling? How you feeling a week out from your fight? I feel awesome. I feel ready. You know, I feel like MMA is like uh, I don't know if the word is finicky or. But they switch up so fast, they forget about you. There's so much new blood coming in mm -hmm. that they forget about you. So it's a good way to remind people. I feel like I got something to show people. It's funny, too, that you say that because, you know, if you look back, I was just refreshing my memory. Um, and I was like, oh, wait, I was at that strike force fight when Bobby fought. Oh, wait, I think I was at that affliction fight when Bobby fought somebody. Oh, my God. Like, you, you have fought a lot of people that aren't fighting anymore. Do you know what I mean? And you're still a pretty young dude. So what am I of business. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's just it. So, how but a lot of people out of business. You know, when you fight me, it's very hard. It's very hard when you fight yep. me. A lot of people don't understand my style. A lot of guys don't fight. They take them some time to get back in the ring after those punishments. It's very true. But now the, the thing is, it's been a little while for you. You did have some fights that were uh, that were supposed to happen and then that, they got canceled. But then you did, you know, get get one fight um, in there. But uh, the Land of Anata fight, right, was the last one. Is that right? No, you had one after that. No, no, I fought Eric Coke after that. I beat That's Eric right, Coke Eric Coke, and we that. were in uh, North Carolina, I think it was, right? In or yes, no, yeah. yes, no. So how frustrating was that for you, you know, to have some fights lined up? And they were good-name fights, too, um, with the injuries having to come out. Like, how, how much did that uh, weigh on you not being able to fight when you wanted to? In such a better situation, you know, financially and, you know, uh, in terms of where I want to be with my peers. Mm -hmm. So it really sucks. I feel like I missed out big names that I can just take out and keep it going, you know? So it's a minor setback, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. I think if I was there, maybe I might not be the person I am now. So who is Bobby Green these days then? What kind of fighter is Bobby Green? What kind of a man is Bobby Green these days? Who is Bobby Green? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um, I just like to be real, you know? Um, and, I, and what the acronym of real stands for is recognizing everybody isn't loyal or, or every, recognizing that all people aren't loyal, right. you know, um, they're not loyal. It's just who you are for now and, and what you're doing. So for, for me, it's just really giving the crowd something they can remember, you know? Um, I think we see fights every week that you're just like, okay, okay. You're so get so like, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say the word brainwash, but like it just becomes repetitive, you know? And I feel like, wrestler is the big thing right now the wrestlers are killing it mm -hmm. they're running the divisions and i'll be honest i don't want to be a hater or sound like a hater yeah. but that shit's low-key kind of boring to me i'm gonna keep it real you know like i'm watching the guys with went to a couple shows and i'm like this shit is boring you know and i'm not trying to hate or anything like that but i feel like we're in the business of entertainment you know um so for me the, from the moment i hit from behind the curtain to the time i go behind back behind the curtains it's a show Mm -hmm. It's a, it's like a, a rap concert. It's a, a fight. It's a WWE wrestling match. All of those things combined into one. You know, I really feel like a lot of people don't exactly give that excitement in their fighting style. You have to have your art. You have to win, but not only win, but in winning exciting ways that keeps the crowd entertained. So is Drakkar Close though the kind of guy that can give you? You know, I don't want to say a fight of the night performance because some of those fighters are like, I don't want fight of the night because that means he got his licks in too. You know what I mean? I just want a performance bonus. But is Drakkar the kind of guy that you can have that kind of dynamic fight with, do you think? Um, I want to answer it honestly. Even though I look at the guy and he's kind of like a, supposed to be like a friend, he was supposed to be a friend to me, but uh, I'm honest to say no. Um, I'm going to say no. Like he's kind of boring, you know. Um, he wants to fight, but then he wants to hug and and I don't know. I don't know. That's a empty question. I just feel like your art is, is your art, you know. And then whatever way you put your art out is the way you put it out. But that's not me, you know. Um, I think I was gonna fight at night. But we had two other guys, uh, and I forgot who it was. Just rock 'em, sock 'em, robot. Right. And they want to fight at night. I thought I should have got it, but. If I would have got that, I would have been four for eight, you know, which is half of my fights, mm -hmm. which says that I'm an entertaining fighter. It says yeah. I'm doing my job and I'm trying to uh, put a great show on. Um, but with that being said, it's just like I said, it's your art. It's how you do it. 
I'm doing this stuff to entertain my American fans. You know, we're going to be out in Milwaukee, and I'm here to get America behind me and let them know, hey, there's some great Americans that are out there doing some great things. Let's get behind them. I feel like America right now, like, we're so spoiled. We're like spoiled kids. We got football. We got boxing. We got wrestling. We got soccer. We got surfing. You could be into anything you want to be into. And I feel like they don't get behind the Americans like uh, a Conor McGregor mm -hmm. or Darren Till or Michael Bisbee. Yeah. All these people that come from another country, Anderson Silva. They get the whole country behind. The country comes out to whatever state, wherever they're going to be, and they're going to come out with support with the flags and everything. I just feel like as Americans. Yeah, it is interesting. And, and maybe it is because, like you just said, we have so many options and there's so many different stars. And maybe if LeBron was playing somewhere else, he would get America chance. But, you know, he doesn't he doesn't get him every single day here. I mean, I feel like you I feel like you have a lot of support, though. I feel like people know when a Bobby Green fight comes on, like that's one that you should watch. I mean, do you do you feel that way, at least that your fans know what they get when they put dollars down for a Bobby Green fight? Um, I don't know like a uh, negative but i want to say no what? i want to say that i just think of myself as a as just a, a go get them guy just yeah. a regular guy i'm not anybody special or anything new like oh my god or you know i just do my thing i really don't really pay too much attention i felt like when you start hearing people and listen to people and you start to get big-headed or you start to believe what they say you know i, I got people that tell me every day that i am i'm not shit I'm nothing, you know, and so I'm getting to your mind. I got other people saying, hey, you're going to get the title one day. I just do me, and I try not to focus on the fans so much unless it's an interaction person to person. Mm -hmm. I believe in it. If you want to come see me, come see me face to face, and we'll get to know each other more, you know? So with, with you mentioning loyalty, though, like, do you find, and maybe you don't want them, but do you find you have a lot of fighter friends, like a lot of friends in the fight community? Or is it hard because maybe you'll be friends with somebody and maybe you guys will end up fighting? Because, you know, you feel so, so you see so often, obviously, teammates are bonded and this and that. But at the end of the day, you are in an individual game. Um, so I'm wondering kind of what your take is on, on friendships within the sport. Oh, I'm all down for it. I think that, that that's awesome. I think that that makes it so much more uh, easier, mm -hmm. if I want to say that, because I feel like some fighters need that. They need to be, let's be friends, let's be cool, let's touch gloves, right. and then we can have a good entertaining fight because I'm kind of taking my shoulders. But for me, I mean, I think that's I think that's the best thing to have friends, but I really don't care. It's whenever you guys he won't have a City fight, let's do that. If not, let's be cool. Like, I love Lando Banana. Lando Banana has been one of the coolest fighters that I've, I've had. A... And it was great the whole entire time. We had a fight at night, so we both got to say, hey, good job. You know, I saw him in a bar, gave him some knuckles, and hey, great, great job. Nice. Well, you guys, you and Drakkar both fought Lando. You, yours went to a draw. There was a point deducted. Your fight was kind of crazy. Um, but did you see anything? I, I don't know if you watched tape, Bobby, if you watched uh, Lando versus Drakkar and, and obviously your own fight there and saw if you had any ways of like any thought process here on how to beat Drakkar. First of all, let's say the difference between the two. One got fought at night and one didn't. Yeah. So I noticed that part about it, you know, it's exciting fighters and Lance is an exciting fighter. Oh yeah, very. And I don't know how you can make a boring a, a make a boring fight with Lando, you know? I didn't feel like it was it was into uh, uh, so I don't know. Um and, and then in terms of learning what I want to fight, I actually sat Jakar down because I know Jakar. And I knew Jakar before all this and I thought we were friends. So the day before us fight I took him we went out for dinner and stuff and I'm like, hey, do this and do this and you should have some success, you know? Um not trying to take anything from him. Like, whatever he does, whatever he does. You know, he's a great fighter. Whatever he does is great. But I just thought I was looking out for a friend. Uh -huh. Even though I really love fucking Lando. Right. Lando, but I've been knowing Jakar longer. Um, some of the girls I dated, Jakar tried to date. You know, uh, I've been down to the lab and trained with him. Yeah. So it's just like more interaction, you know. So it's just like, uh, I'll, help you, I'll tell you a little something, you know. But that was about it. So as far as it goes in terms of, I don't know, I just let it go. I let it go. I'm an open book when it comes to, to fight. Yeah. You can never you can never predict what you're going to do in there. You can never say, oh, we're going to do these things, and it happened exactly as you thought, you know, especially with a guy like me. You 
you see the speed, you think you see the timing, and so you realize when you're getting there, it's totally different. So why why aren't you and Jakar close anymore? Oh my god, I totally said that. <laughs> wow. Sorry. Um, I just felt he shouldn't have took the. You know, um, I think it would sound like like we were in a particular situation. We were both looking for fights. My manager called me and wanted me to go to Brazil to fight a Brazilian. I said no because she they're like I felt like it'd be a little bit biased. And then they asked me to go to Russia to fight a Russian. I was like, ah, I really hate planes, period. I don't want to be on a plane for so long. Right. I'm only I'm an American fighter. No disrespect to the other country. I'm here to promote my country and right. I push in for my country. So I said if the next one's whatever's in, in the US, I'm there. I'm not saying no. And Jakar got brought up. So I was like, "Ugh, I want to fight my friend. Right. Let's do this. Let's let's send it to him. And knowing, hopefully he's in. No, like we're friends. Like right. I'm like, I don't want to do it really. You're not gonna say no, and then we're gonna let that go, and maybe I'll find a different opponent. Right. He said yes. Yeah. So I was actually shocked. I'm like, oh, I guess we're fighting. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I mean, because some people say I wouldn't fight my friend unless it was for the belt. But again, I guess that kind of goes back to my uh, initial question about friends in the business. But so so really, it was just. But you're not enemies now. I mean, will you guys be able to hug it out after you fight? Be like, oh, this is what you asked for. Here's, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I'll leave that all up to them. You know, I'm just kind of like your energy. I'm looking at you and I'm like. Cool, like this dick right now. You trying to be a dick? Oh, fuck him. I don't want to shake your hand. Dude. Like, I don't know. I'm just going off your energy. Right. Um, as far as family goes, like Nate Diaz, it's like a it's like my big I, I sit on Nate's couch. Yeah, Nate, when I didn't have a dollar, he let me stay at his house free, right. train with him, learn all the stuff of the business. Um, so I would, me and Nate had made a pact, we'd never fight each other, right? And that's just it. He said, I can't fight him, I can't fight Gilbert Melendez. Oh, come on. So I'm like, cool, that's cool. And then shouldn't even be brought up. Right. Me and Jakar didn't have that. So right. with that being said, I didn't expect it, but it is what it is. I get you. I get you. Well, and it's funny too when you talk about Gil and Nate. I mean, these are guys I've known since I first met Gil and like and Nate in like 2008 or something. You know, you'd always see Gil's dad at the fights at Strike Force and everything like that. So um, I feel. I mean, those guys are. I love them. Please don't fight them, Bobby. I don't want you. To, I don't want you to fight either of those dudes either. So yeah, don't. yeah, they're my boys. I've never. never. Yeah. So listen, one thing, uh, you know, you um, were doing UFC Now with us the other day, which if folks haven't seen it, they should go back and look at your episodes. You did a couple with us. It was your first time out and you were great. This man came in like pimping in like a red suit, put us to shame. Like we're sitting there in like a t-shirt and a whatever, like, oh, oh, okay, Bobby, I see you. Apparently you're doing this for real and we're not, but um, you were, you were great. But one of the storylines we were talking about was Justin Willis and we're talking about how he came from foster homes and he wanted to give back. And I feel like that's something that maybe some people know about you and maybe some people don't, but you went through the foster system and obviously we see you as a, as a stand up guy today. Um, but what are your hopes for helping people? What, what would you like to do if, if, if we said, Bobby, here's all the money, here's the platform, here's everything you need. What would you like to do for foster kids? And families. Um, if I had all the money, which I don't, but if I had all the money, I would like to open a group home, yeah. you know, for troubled kids and stuff, you know, especially boys, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like all the boys right now, like, don't have fathers, you know, and I have a father figure to give them the right information and, and put something good in their heart. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be the toughest, toughest guy in the streets mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. So I just like to give them a different light. Like, hey, you can be yourself and, and just know about growing, about learning, you know. It's all about learning and knowledge. Not mm -hmm. So giving these kids the right information and the right motivation to be better. You know, I feel like when we only, when you only see, for me, I lost her since I was four years old. I never had a mom, never had a dad. My grandmother raised me. She died when I was about 14 years old. And then from there on, I've been doing this thing on my own. Mm -hmm. Poor network connection. Oh, is that no, you I or is that me? You're still good. I think we're good still. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Just make sure. So, I don't know. Like, um, I grew up with blacks. I grew up with white Mexicans. I grew up with some Asian people. I speak a little Spanish. Mm -hmm. I love poquito. Mm -hmm. You know, I do it all, you know, just because I've seen all of us alive. So, I want to be able to give kids the same thing. Hey, 
you can you can be cool with these guys. You can make up. They, there's so much that you can learn from so many different people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, giving them different opportunities like that. I love it. Well, I, I hope I hope that there's a way. I hope people can hear your message. And, um, you know, uh, I, I think you'd be great at it. It's funny because as we talk right now, you know, we're just a few hours removed from the title fight between Brian Ortega and Max Holloway. You know, Brian Ortega is a guy who, you know, grew up and, and had it kind of rough in certain places and knows people from the wrong side of the tracks and made a conscious effort to, to turn his life around. I feel like I feel like both of you are, are. I mean, I know there's a lot more examples of that, too, but I feel like you guys are such a positive uh, a reinforcement of the fact that you can become what you want to become. You know what I mean? And that and that a bad start doesn't have to lead to a, a bad finish, which I find so admirable. For, for you guys so just thank you for your positivity and the message that you're already giving people because I feel like even if you don't hear it and even if people don't say it to you I feel like you are putting a lot of positivity out there that that is helping I try I try, I try to do the best I can to motivate people you know there's so much people that I think are dealing with depression and stuff like that I just want to reach out to those people and let them know like like when you say about the soup thing I've been I've had I've had hand-me-downs all my life I didn't get in any shopping and talk about 20 able to work on my own and, and buy myself my own clothes yeah. um so when i wear a suit i just wear it feel good i want to feel like somebody i want to be something yeah. you know you can reach out to all these people and let them know you can be whatever you want to be well you look good in it and i and i i, I loved it though you you did you came like strutting in and i was like uh oh <laughs> he's looking good <laughs> it's like the mushroom belt you got to coordinate no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> I try. Look good, feel good, perform well. That's my thing. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, listen, Bobby, um, you and Drakkar throwing down next week in Milwaukee. Um, folks should definitely tune in for your fights. Um, is there one favorite fight? If they went back on Fight Pass and they were looking at one definitive fight to get to know Bobby Green, let's say somebody's never seen you fight before, which one fight would you want them to watch? Hmm. That's interesting. I'd say he and Pat. Oh, wait. For Pat Healy. Wait, say it again. The internet got hiccuped right there. I think you said Bam Bam Healy? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Huh? I would say Pat Healy. I think either Pat Healy or or maybe me and James Krause. Uh -huh. Me and James Krause, we had a great fight, but it ended in controversy. Yeah. I still say fine. It hit him right here. Right here. So if you watch it, it's right here on right. the line. But he's saying that it hit a low blow. Ball in your finger down there. But somehow, it... oh, my God, you hit the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got it. And by the way, thank you too for the for the ab preview for those at home that were maybe eating too much holiday oh, wow. food. That's what a, that, that's what the abs are supposed to look like. So you know, you just maybe pass on the cookies and cakes and get on that Bobby Green good oh, stuff. Wow. Um, listen, I I'm so excited to watch you fight next week. I'll be in Milwaukee. Um, I'm not looking forward to the cold, but I'm definitely looking forward to the face punching. And uh, hopefully, you and I get to work together again at UFC now because that was really fun. Awesome. I'll be looking forward to that. You know, same thing here. I hate the cold weather. I am a Cali baby, so I love my son. But we're going to get to what we got to do in the cold or in the hot. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Bobby. Well, thanks so much. Uh, safe travels, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.